Shipping, putting its asset management division up for sale as the industrial conglomerate moves further away from banking and finance. And makeup giant Avon reportedly in discussions with some private equity firms about receiving money to help shore up its struggling finances. I'm Tom Busby, CNBC Radio. Meet Vince. Vince hurt himself mountain biking on Saturday. Because weekend warrior. <clears throat> because noob. Hey. Vince is supposed to host an important presentation, but he's not going anywhere in that cast. What should he do? Rhetorical question. Vince should try go to meeting. The simple way to host meetings online, complete with video conferencing and screen sharing. Send out a meeting link and anyone can join from any computer, tablet, or smartphone. Just takes a click. Where do I sign up? Visit gotomeeting.com to start your free 30-day trial. That's gotomeeting.com. Have you had trouble with online dating? This is eHarmony founder Dr. Neil Clark Warren. We've created a new solution, EH+. EH Plus combines the personal attention of a matchmaker with eHarmony's extensive pool of great singles. EH Plus gives you hand-selected matches and freedom from being online. Get started today. Call 855-930-LOVE. That's 855-930-LOVE. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make offer.com is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk to your buyer or seller plus you can use video to showcase your items buy sell make offer.com Good afternoon. It's 12.03. I'm Di Rice with the only live local news here in the Inland Empire. KCAA 1050 AM has it. It's now easier for Inland people with tattoos to give blood. The Inland area's largest bank, Livestream, has changed the rules allowing them to donate their body art if their body art was done at a licensed facility in California. The new policy, which took effect August 31st, lifts a restriction that forced potential donors with a tattoo to wait one year after their most recent inking to give blood. The decision wasn't made in response to a shortage or specific need for blood, but it should still make a significant difference, according to Lifestream officials. And a $35 million overpass spanning the railroad tracks at Auto Center Drive in Corona is set for completion September 22nd. But city officials say it could have been finished a year ago if negotiations with neighboring businesses had gone smoother. County and state transportation agencies have paid several businesses $10,000 to $100,000 each to use their land for the project. But two businesses have yet to agree on a fair price for the land. A judge is set to rule on those cases by 2017. The overpass has been in the city's master plan for the past 20 years. Officials have said that uh, there were as many as 33 railway crossing fatalities reported last year in California and four in Riverside County. And after a fast-moving afternoon storm blacked out about 3,800 uh, homes in southwest Riverside County yesterday, Southern California Edison workers are continuing emergency operations today. Though an updated number of blacked out homes was not available this morning, SCE officials said crews are working to get the power turned back on. SCE E uh, turned to emergency operations yesterday by dispatching rapid response crews to make repairs from damage caused by extreme heat and, of course, the thunderstorms. Inland Empire weather today. More of what we've been having the last couple days. Chance of showers, partly sunny. Highs 102, very muggy out there. Overnight lows about 78. Currently it is 97 degrees here in San Bernardino. Looking out your, at your drive, there's an accident in Colton in the right lane of the 10 westbound just after Mount Vernon. And that's going to put you behind about 13 minutes. 
Other than that, there's the road construction on the 91 westbound between Van Buren and uh, Tyler Street. And that is the very latest with news, weather and traffic on the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA 1050 AM. Larry Burnett here inviting you to join me for Open Season Fridays at 6 p.m. right here on KCAA. It's three guys dropping gloves, tackling issues, and swinging for the fences. Great sports talk right here on KCAA AM 1050. You can be intentional about your character, your work ethic. You've got to be on the same page. Today we're calling to let you know we are debt-free, house and everything. You have done really, really, really good. And you're not going to quit now. It's been a huge witness for us to be able to share that. It was time to get serious. Intentionality, people. Celebrate the success. Oh my God, thank you so much. This is your show, America. If I knew at 22 what I know now, our life would be better off. It's the show that's changing the world. Now you don't just listen to the show, you live it. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Dave Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has replaced the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show, America. You jump in, we will talk. Going to do something very special this hour. My daughter, Rachel Cruz, is joining us this hour, and she and I are going to talk to you about how to go to college debt-free. We wrote the uh, number one New York Times bestselling book together. It's called Smart Money, Smart Kids. It's a book for parents on how to teach your children about money. One of the last things you do in that step, of course, is you send them to college debt-free, and you teach them how to go to college debt-free, and you teach them how to make the choices, and you coach them through that process. The book is Smart Money, Smart Kids. And you can get more information on all of this stuff, like going to college debt-free at Smart Money, Smart Kids. Welcome back, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for having me back on. So the great, Always fun. So the great myth of going to college is that the only way to be a student is to have a student loan. It's impossible to go to college without a student loan. Everyone knows that. Except you and me. Except hopefully more people than just you and me, but yes. <laughs> A large sector of the population, yes, yeah, but believes not, that. Not as large as you would think. I mean, I mean no, yeah, not, you're not, right. You're not, right. Enough, not enough people believe you can do this debt free. You're right. And so you've spent uh, under the heading of the Smart Money Smart Kids project, and under the heading of a lot of the speaking you've done in colleges and at colleges around America, and uh, a lot of research time as well. You, you've really studied this, and we are finding people that actually have gone to school debt free. By the way. If you went to school recently and have graduated, college I'm talking about, and you graduated with a degree, debt-free, call into the show right now. We want to talk to you and interview you to prove that this is, uh, that, 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 you know, that you're not a unicorn, that it, you actually exist. You're not a mythical creature. And so call in right now. The phone number is 888 825 Two two five. We want to talk to college students, recent college graduates, who did so debt free. Even if your parents paid for it, I don't care how it happened. If you went debt free, I want to hear your story. Rachel wants to hear your story. America needs to hear your story to hear it can be done. So, but we have found. Let, let's say that your kid is a college junior, a high school junior, high school senior, and you don't have any money. So they're staring down the barrel of college, and it's it's not looking good. And they're just everybody's just kind of resigns and goes, well, I guess we got to do student loans then. And it's just not true. There's things you can do to go to college debt free, even if you start the process with little to no money. Absolutely, and I think that attitude, like you're what you just said, oh, I guess student loans is the way to go. Is that's what I'm finding so many people. It's like they just fall into this hole of student loans because they kind of just passively walk into it because they really do believe that this is the only way to go to college. And so it's kind of this almost second thought. Yeah, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to college. That's what everyone's doing. You know, it's kind of like the second high school. You just go to college, and so we don't have the money for it, but just take out student loan. It's fine. It's kind of this passive way about going going about it. And what I found is that people who are proactive plan on the front end and have this absolute mentality of, I'm absolutely not going to borrow money to go to college. 100%, I'm not going to do it. Those are the students that I find, find it impossible 
possible, crazy, possible to go to college debt free, but they have to have that mindset. They have to be proactive and plan and they have to kind of draw a line in the sand and just say, no matter what, I'm not going to school with debt. And the reason we have one point two tri- one point three trillion, trillion dollars of student loan debt is it has become so normal that honestly when you fill out FAFSA, you get sent stuff that doesn't even look like it's a loan. It looks like you're getting a scholarship because it's so normalized and people don't half look at it. They go, oh, look, there's money. They're going to give me money. And you sign it yep. only to find out later you just put yourself in thirty or $40,000 worth of student loan debt. Yeah. And because some students have said to me, you know, well, a portion of this, I didn't really realize I was going into debt for it. And and that kind of sounds stupid. Like people probably hear that. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? But it's true. I mean, like it's the, so su- it's almost it's so subtle that the way. Yeah. yeah. That you have to be so diligent when you're doing things like the FAFSA. It, and usually explain to people what the FAFSA is. It, it's basically the application that you have to apply for when you are going to get grants, scholarship, or loans. And so what they do is they send you an award packet telling you what money you have to go to school. And and part of that is money for loans. Part of that is money for grants. Part of that is money for scholarships. So it's all kind of lumped in together. And so that's where you have to have your due diligence to weed out what is free money that you don't have to pay back and what are loans that you do have to pay back. And a lot of students, they just fall into this trap. And and a big thing too, I find, is that their parents, not to blame you parents in America out there, but the parents don't step up and step in and say, hey, this is not a smart idea. You wanna go borrow $80,000 to go get an undergrad degree in English. I don't think that's a smart idea. So as a parent too, I would say you guys need to step up and help your 18 year olds who may or may not be very wise at 18, make these decisions. And so that's one thing that I see is that parents, they just sit by and they say, well, they're 18, they can make their own decisions. I'm like, yeah, they're 18. I mean, they're signing their lives away, going 30 to 80 to 120. I've talked to some people in debt for school. And they, so, they're 18. They can make their own decisions, which means they're allowed to get in a car and drive 180 miles an hour right at the wall. But as a parent, it's your job to keep that from happening. I mean, it's just because they're, quote, legal doesn't mean they're smart. And you, I'm amazed at the reasons people choose a school that they can't afford. My friends are going there. One girl called here on the show. I'll never forget it not long ago. And she liked the pretty houses in the town where she was going to go to pay out-of-state tuition. You know, I mean, this yeah. is how she's making her... This is your 18-year-old we're talking about here. And yeah. so if The parents, campus is pretty. The campus I hear is that pretty. a lot. The campus is pretty. They got a great football team. Right. Give me a break. Right. Seriously, this is how you choose your, your education spot? But it is when you're 18. It's how you choose. You know, more people... The, peop- the teenagers spend more time picking out their spring break vacation than they do picking out their college. And, and, and they pick it out for about the same dadgum reasons. It, it's got a great party rating, you know, is a great reason no, to go to school there. They wouldn't do that. No, we wouldn't do that's that. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. FAFSA stands, by the way, for free application for federal, federal student, student aid. aid, which means that no Ramsey kid ever filled out a FAFSA. We didn't fill them out because we didn't need a free application for federal student aid. We weren't going to qualify. We make too much money. We had the money. We were going to pay for the kids to go to school. So we weren't applying for student loan aid or student aid or certainly weren't signed up for a stinking student loan. But everybody feels like it's almost like a law. You have to fill out FAFSA. You don't have to fill it out. It's not required. No, but in order to get scholarships and grants, that is one avenue sometimes you do have to take. So it's not a bad thing to fill it out, but be careful. I mean, if you got the money to go to college and you got the college picked out and you can afford to go, you don't have to fill out FAFSA. It's not like a federal law or something. And everybody acts like, oh, I got to fill this thing. Because it's pretty intimidating when you fill it out. It's massive, for one thing. But then you get all this crap and student loan stuff back. So I think, and you think too, you're saying the number one key to going to college debt-free is parental involvement. Yes. To making a good decision. Absolutely. That's a big one, which leads us to picking a school that you can afford. The in-state tuition, two years at a community college community or whatever. Community college is a great, a great second option too, yes. Okay, we've got some callers on the line. We come back, we're going to talk to some actual college graduates. They do exist that went to school and recently graduated without any debt. And if that's you, we want to talk to you. 888-825-5225. Debt-free college hour with Rachel Cruz. This September 11th, join me, Tom Brokaw, and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square for 9-11, Rising Above. The choir's music and everyday Americans tell how our nation has risen from the ashes of tragedy to meet the new challenges of the 21st century. 
marked the anniversary of 9-11 with this tribute to the American spirit, 9-11, rising above. Honor the memory of 9-11, Friday morning at 6, here on KCAA 1050 AM. C-A-A. We found the problem with your car. Um, Turns out the uh, carburetor differential modulator is out. What? And while we were digging around in there, this thing fell off. Stop. There's no automotive repair nightmares at Diego Martinez's Five Star Automotive in San Bernardino. Five Star Automotive, where you'll get a great experience and home of the $15.99 oil change. That's right, just $15.99. They specialize in transmissions, brake repair, AC, and many other repairs, all with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. Diego knows when your auto needs five-star attention, it's never convenient. He offers a 12-month interest fee auto repair loan on major auto repairs with no money down. He even throw in free towing and a 10% discount for his neighbors in the 909 who work for the city and county of San Bernardino. Call 909-387-0770. That's 387-0770. Your neighbors at 909 West 2nd Street in San Bernardino. Tired of spending too much money on an ad and then trying to find your ad in the newspaper buried among hundreds, even thousands of other ads? Isn't it time you got a great deal when you were trying to sell that car, that dining room set, that refrigerator, or offering your handyman services? Now you can in the Nickel Shopper. For as little as $7.50 per week, your ad can be seen by thousands of eyeballs in the high desert, and they're getting the Nickel Shopper for free. Call today to place your ad in the Nickel Shopper, 760-646-3654, or go to thenickelshopper.com for all the details, 760-646-3654, the Nickel Shopper. Now in the IE. It's getting hot here at Freeway Auto Center. Coming up Saturday, September 12th, Freeway Auto Center presents their car meet and sales event. They're bringing you trophies, raffles, vendors, music, and much more just when you thought there was nothing to do on a Saturday in September. <sighs> Freeway Auto Center brings you a day you won't forget. All brought to you by Low and Fitted. Not to mention the all-day promo and video recording. Find out how much fun you can have buying a car. Remember, it all comes together at Freeway Auto Center from 1 to 10 p.m. Saturday, September the 12th. Did I tell you where it all happens? No. It's going to be at 333 South Waterman. That's just north of the 10 Freeway. The Freeway Auto Center car meet and sales event. Hosted by Low and Fitted, September 12th. It's getting hot at Freeway Auto Center. You've never had such a good time buying a car. Thank you for keeping it tuned to KCAA Radio. AM 1050 gives you all the information you need to know and maybe just a little bit more. It's a debt-free college hour on the Dave Ramsey Show. Yes, it can be done. And we have callers calling in that have rec- are recent college graduates are going to tell us how they did it. We know, Rachel knows, Rachel Cruz, my daughter, is with us, co-author with me of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Smart Money, Smart Kids. Uh, we know there's five things you can do, and if you do those five things, it is possible to go to school debt-free. Two of them we've already covered. We're going to come back and make sure all five are covered during this hour, so don't leave. In the meantime, let's talk to Faith in Fort Hood, Texas. Hi, Faith. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm well. How are you? I am better than I deserve. So when did you graduate? 2008. 2008. And you went to school 100% debt-free? Yes, sir. Where'd you go to school? Pensacola Christian College in Florida. 
Okay. And a four-year school? Yes, sir. And a private school, right, Faith? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you get your degree in? Accounting. Wow. Okay. And how long did it take you to get out? Uh, four years. Four, you did four years in four years. Yeah, I did. You're a miracle You're child. You're a unicorn, like we talked about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Graduated debt-free and in four years. So how did you do this debt-free? Tell me about it. Um, well, my brother is nine years older than me, and when he was going to college, my parents made it very clear to the rest of us in my family that um, they were not going to be paying for our college. So even at you know nine years old, I was already thinking about that. Um, they did, however, provide us with vehicles to get to work. They said they were going to help us earn our college money um, by giving us a vehicle to to lead, lending us a vehicle. I guess you could say to um, to use. And that so probably started, wasn't when you were nine. That's probably when you were sixteen, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my dad owns his own business, and at twelve, he allowed me to kind of start doing some stuff to earn money here or there. Um, I started nannying at 14, um, about 30 hours a week. I was homeschooled, so I could kind of adjust my schooling schedule to fit my work schedule, which enabled me to work a lot of jobs that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Um, when I was 16, I started working at a bank um, pretty much full-time year-round and doing my school in the evenings and uh, was able to make very a lot of savings. Um, a lot, a lot of savings. And so I actually went into my freshman year of college with $12,000 in the bank. Um, wow. And the, school, the school that I went to, all room and board included, was only at the time about 6500 a year. So I really had my first two years paid for by the time I left. Okay. Um, and so my freshman year, I didn't work while I was at school. I kind of wanted to adjust to that schedule first. But then from sophomore year on, I worked while I was at school between 20 and 30 hours a week. And then I'd come home and I'd work 50 to 60 hours a week during the summer um, at the bank. They allowed me to do overtime, which was a huge blessing. Um, and then I'd babysit here or there, work for my dad still some um, to earn some extra money. So I was actually able to graduate with money in savings um, instead of in debt, which was my goal. But I was still, I think, a little surprised that I, I was able to accomplish it. <laughs> I'm not. As hard as you worked, you work like an animal, girl. I did. So I now, did. how hard but, was it for you to? How hard was it to for, work like an animal now? So how hard was it for you to right. find a job? How hard was it for um, you to find a was, job when you got out? It was not difficult at all. I bet. Um, I actually went to go work for a ministry, um, and the job kind of fell in my lap. Um, and I was there for six years after I graduated. And then last summer, um, I moved to get married down to Texas. And that was a little bit more difficult because I was so far removed from college. People, you know, employers were a little bit um, hesitant. But once I got in a job, um, I was, I mean, I moved up the ranks, pay raises, everything really quick. Um, so it's, I've always been blessed with very well-paying, good jobs with great employers. That's amazing. Um, so you were working 20 to 30 hours while going to school. Is that what you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. So was that hard to keep up your studies? Because that's what I hear a lot of college students say and parents, um, you know, we don't want our child to work because their grades may slip. Right. I would say it was, I probably struggled more with time management when I wasn't working because having, having a shorter time period where your deadline is a little bit more foreboding, yeah. <laughs> it was easier to, to really like put my, put my head to it and get my homework done. And I actually, I think, had more free time or I, I appreciated the free time I had more than when I was a freshman and just kind of, oh, my homework takes me an hour and I have four hours tonight to, to do nothing. So Totally. Yeah. The re a lot of research shows that students who work 19 hours a week graduate with higher GPAs than students who don't work at all. Just exactly like you said, it's the time management. You're forced right. in a time of, okay, this is when I have to work and study instead of going back to the dorm and watching reality TV and eating Doritos, you know what I mean? Just doing right, whatever you exactly. want. I mean, you have to have a schedule and that puts so much, you know, um, gosh, character building so, in you to, to be able to structure all of that. It's amazing. Right. Faith, Faith, what was your GPA? I had a 4.0, actually. Ding, ding. Well, there we go. I'm yeah. not shocked. And what's your income now? Um, my income now, well, I'm working part-time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making about $15 an hour doing accounting work. Mm -hmm. Um I've never, I mean, when I, right after I graduated in a ministry, my income was not very much at all, mm -hmm. but thankfully I knew how to live on little because that's what I'd kind of been preparing for the whole time I was in college. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't go out to eat a lot in college cause I didn't, I didn't want to spend that money on that because I wasn't sure I was going to have enough to pay my bills. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I would hire her.
Amazing. She, she's very employable. I mean, listen to her. Not, I mean, the 4.0 is impressive, not nearly as impressive as the, uh, as the work ethic. And and a, and a degree that's marketable, an accounting degree. I mean, this this is this is how you make successful children, people. You just heard it. This is amazing, absolutely awesome. Thank you, Faith. Matt is next. Matt is in Salt Lake City. Hey, Matt, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. So, what year did you graduate? So I graduated in 2005 from Weber State University in Utah. Okay. And uh, what's your degree in? Business administration. Okay. And uh, how long did it take you to get out of school? So I, I did it in four and a half years, but I had to take a semester off because after my first semester of college, I got married. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, how, did, how did you get through debt-free? Tell us your story. So, um, you know, this is something that I, I do take a lot of pride in because of the process that I did have to go through to, to get through college debt-free. I started out my first semester... And my parents helped me out with that first semester. But I remember when I made the decision to get married after that first semester, my dad basically said, if you can make that kind of a decision, then you're on your own. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll tell you what, that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because um, then I had to figure out. I knew that I was going to go through college. That was not an option for me. Um, but kind of like Rachel was talking about earlier, I was not going to do it with debt. So I was going to figure out another way to get it done. Um, and so once I, once I was married, I decided I had to find a full-time job and it couldn't be something that was just going to be, you know, a minimum wage type job. And I, I ended up working, uh, a full-time job the entire time I went through school, 40 hours a week, um, at a straight commission job, which for me was really good. It, it allowed me to make enough money to make those payments for school. Um, and by the time I graduated, I was married. We had one baby and we had one on the way. And, uh, you know, with, with working full time and, and some of those grants and things, I would take any of the free money they would give me. And it's, it's funny because I did get some of those applications and we had to dig through to figure out what was the free money and what was a loan and really, um, you know, focus, take the time to figure out what that was so that we could stay away from getting in, into debt. Um, but by going through all those, those what, do, what do you do now? What's that? What do you do now? So now I'm in uh, pharmaceutical sales. Okay. What's your income now? Um, I make anywhere from 120 to 140 thousand dollars a year. What was your GPA when you graduated? Um, my overall was 385. My major GPA was a 40. What was the? How expensive a school was that you went to? Um, you know, it's it's hard to say how much it was per year. That's that's a good question. I mean, we. My wife and I. I mean, was it more than a state school? Less than a state school? More than Harvard? Less than Harvard? It was a, st a state school tuition. Okay, so oh, it, was, it okay. was not very expensive, but okay. Uh, you know, I, I've never been. When in you were selling straight commission, asked. when you were selling straight commission in college, what were you selling? Selling furniture. Ah, very cool. Hey, Forty man. hours a week. There Great job, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Congratulations, you're it, man. Again. It, the, the success of doing this led to success in adulthood. Why? Because it develops grit more than just book sense. There's a pattern here. Are you guys seeing this? This is the Dave Ramsey Show. This is KCAA. California headline news, a sweeping climate change bill moves forward without a key provision that would have required a 50% reduction of petroleum fuel. Evan Brown says big oil used scare tactics to keep the goal from cutting into their profits. No company wants to see its business cut 50% just because some governor of California says, hey, that's what we're going to do. This is a big goal. It's a very heroic objective, and it's very real. Scaled back bill still includes 50% goals for energy from renewable sources and energy efficient buildings. Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson questioning the authenticity of rival Donald Trump's faith. Carson telling reporters in Anaheim. You know, I realize where my success has come from. And I don't in any way deny my faith in God. And I think... Uh, that probably is a big difference. Carson, a Seventh-day Adventist who has strong support from evangelicals, Trump has been claiming that his favorite book is the Bible. Geico weather, dangerously high temperatures in several areas of the state. Jeff Scott, California News. 
I don't like sit-down dinners, I don't go to sit-down strikes. I like standing room only, and I don't ride bikes. This pretty bad song is by a guy with pretty bad hemorrhoids. He needs Preparation H relief with the power of two. First, use fast-acting Preparation H medicated wipes, then longer-lasting Preparation H maximum strength cream. Let's sit together on the porch swing. Preparation H. Don't stand for hemorrhoids. Use as directed. And try specially formulated medicated wipes for women. September 12th, undefeated champion Floyd Mayweather faces off against Andre Berto in an historic bout. I worked my whole life to get to this point. Will Mayweather go 49-0, or will Berto pull off the upset of a lifetime? Is he the man who finally solves the pound for pound king's puzzle? Witness history. Mayweather versus Berto. Saturday, September 12th at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Live on pay-per-view. Hey everybody, this is Polka Tom inviting you to join me for Inland Empire Polkas every Saturday from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. right here on KCAA Radio, 1050 a.m. on your dial and online at www.kcaaradio.com. I'll play all the best in polka music for you, so join me every Saturday, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Are you particular about the vitamins and supplements you take? Have you found that the big chain stores simply don't have what you need? Then you should know about the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. You'll find rock bottom prices on gourmet top quality vitamins and mineral supplements at the Vitamin Center. Get 30% off on all supplements and homeopathic products. All, not just selected merchandise. In addition, you'll find 30% off on all cosmetics, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, makeup, hair coloring, and lip gloss. And all tea products are discounted 20%. Why go anywhere else? See for yourself at the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills, 5007 Canaan Road in Agora Hills, or check out the savings and place your order online, vitamincenteragorahills.com. Start saving by getting what you need from the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. And tell a friend that the Vitamin Center ships nationwide. Call 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. The Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. The 9th Annual Inland Empire's Largest Mixer returns to the Ontario Convention Center Wednesday, October 21st. Discover new business service providers from nearly 200 exhibitors. Connect with potential customers. Build and create new business relationships, all while sampling from local restaurants and caterers. The Largest Mixer is open to the entire business community. Wednesday, October 21st at the Ontario Convention Center. Admission is just $20. For exhibitor and attendee information, visit iemixer.com for Inland Empire's Largest Mixer. Hi, I'm John Elway. Did you know that John Elway's Crown Toyota is the largest volume Toyota dealer in the Inland Empire? Here to give you the details is the general sales manager, Kara Brindley. Well, at John Elway's Crown Toyota, we listen to you. And ever since we've changed to our new process, we post our one price, which is our best price, up front on every single vehicle. Now, customers are telling me they look forward to buying their next car from us. So come visit John Elway's Crown Toyota today in the giant Ontario Auto Center where the 10 and 15 meet. One price, simple, no games. Do you like cars, racing, adventure and speed, motorsports of any kind? If it has speed, high performance, or burns octane, there's a brand new show for you. Do you have 1030 weight in your blood, or are you running on 104 performance octane? Then gear up for a brand new show on KCAA called Gotcha Racing. Tune in Saturdays at 4 p.m. with host Joe Britt for news, interviews, and all kinds of stuff you can use about racing and the automotive world. Whether it's learning how to put spark plugs in or spark up your supercharger, Joe's got the answer for you. Ready, buddy? Ready? All right, Dan. Get it in. Gotcha racing. Find out how Joe built the Stallion GT1 exotic sports car or hear the area's best experts on automotive questions. It's gotcha racing right here where we put you in the driver's seat and it doesn't stop till you cross the finish line. Saturdays at 4 p.m. right here on KCAA. It's Gotcha Racing. Well, see you later. Come on, guys, let's go. Hey, man, what are you doing? I'm watering my lawn. Don't you know you can't water your lawn in the middle of the afternoon? Uh-oh, you're in big trouble. Here comes the water police. Well, what do I do now? Tune into the Water Zone Show on KCAA Radio Thursday nights at 6 p.m. They'll help you out. It's
It's a debt-free college theme hour. We're taking calls from people who have recently graduated from college, 100% debt-free, did not borrow money, and hearing their story of how they've done it. Interesting, Rachel, the first two calls in, as you and I wrote the book Smart Money, Smart Kids, and we came out really strong in that book and in newspaper and magazine articles associated with the launch of that book and so forth that kids could go to college debt free if they would work and we often said work 20 hours a week and you could do that you could make it and then uh we've had lots of criticism on that we've had lots of bloggers and stuff attack you attack me on that going well ramsey though they don't live in the real world out here in the real world you can't work your way through school and it's interesting that the first two callers They didn't mention a bunch of scholarships. They worked their way through college. Worked their way through completely. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can say scholarships and grants and that, and I've met plenty of students who have gotten all scholarships and grants, and that literally paid their way through. And and I see that as more applauded, where a lot of people think the working thing is a myth, that you can't work your way through college and still pay for it and graduate debt-free. And like you said, those two callers, I mean, completely busted that myth i mean but you're they're working 20 hours a week i mean this isn't this and isn't they chose colleges that were affordable absolutely very yes. affordable yes and it sounds like in both cases they had very strong parental guidance yes well faith said that even at nine years old her dad told her that that, that they would not pay for their college so Boy, that they matt, would have matt cut him off Matt's dad cut yeah. him off when he got married <laughs> that's right that's you make right. that decision bubba you can pay for it you that's know right. i mean these are not wimpy fied little enabling victim-based parents right i mean you don't hear anything you don't hear enabling in these in these kids you don't hear victim thinking in these kids y- young people they're not kids they're your age but um and I mean, they survived and they're they, breathing and they no, could call the no, show. No, they, they didn't survive. They prospered. Yes. Well, I'm I mean, they, it didn't they, kill them. They, I mean, are, they, are, they, not, they not only didn't die, but they became awesome. Yes. Yes. I mean, Matt's making a hundred and something a year. And, yes. and uh, you know, Faith's got an accounting degree doing fine. Well, and, what you I know. loved about Faith's story, too, is she graduated without debt. So she could go do the ministry job where she said it didn't pay a lot, but she could she could do it. Where I've met a lot of students who want to go do the ministry job, but they can't because of their student loan. Yep. And so it gives her that freedom to go choose what she wants to do. Pretty All right, great. let's go to Carla in Houston, Texas. Carla, tell us your debt-free story. What year did you graduate? Oh, two. Oh, two. Okay. And what is, yeah. uh, where'd you go to school? Texas A&M. Whoop. <laughs> okay. She's an Aggie, folks. All right, Texas I'm A&M. Aggie. <laughs> we don't have to ask if that's in-state tuition. We know it is. What's your degree in? International Studies. Okay. And uh, and how long did it take you to graduate? Four years. Okay. Cool. So tell us your story. How'd you go through debt-free? Well, um, my parents didn't have a lot of money to send me to school. And I knew I wanted to go to school, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. So I started doing some research as to what can I do to make more than minimum wage. And what I realized is there's 80,000 kids moving in to College Station. And they all need somewhere to live. Now, wait a minute. Let me stop just a second. Because you figured out at 17 years old that minimum wage wasn't going to cut it. No, I actually graduated high school with a cosmetology degree. And I realized I didn't want to work that hard. Yeah. But, I mean, so, you, you said, I have to do something that's not minimum wage, which tells yeah. me that you knew you couldn't pay for school on minimum wage, so you had to yeah. have a better plan. Yeah. And you were yeah. smart enough so to know I that at that age. Year. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I went and enrolled into a real estate school that summer. And within a few months, it took 18 hours. And I got my real estate license. And then I moved to College Station. And I started leasing apartments, houses, anything, you name it. And as a real estate agent that leases places, you get a cut from each person's rent. Mm-hmm. And so um, all summer long, I worked 80 to 100 hours. And um, in the fall, I would get all the texts come in from, you know, each place that I rented. And so that's basically the major part of the tuition. Got I got my money doing that. And then during the fall and the spring, I would take jobs as a waitress. And then I would also officiate soccer games. Okay. Did you get any so. scholarships? I did get one scholarship. I'll put in a plug for Barnes & Noble. They gave me a $1,000 scholarship, which helped me out with some books. And even till today, I will go into Barnes & Noble and pay full price because I know that they helped me out. Yeah. That's cool. They got their 1000 bucks back many times over, probably. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So what was your GPA when you graduated, you working animal? It was about 3.7 something. That's great. 3.7. Wow. Yeah. 
Amazing. Yeah. And and what do you do now? Um, well, I got to do what I really wanted to do, which was international business. And I got to travel with many companies, um, Century 21 and do marketing. But then I started family. And once I started the family, I realized I had to, you know, not work so hard and, you know, get a schedule that fit with my kids. And so now I'm a business teacher. Um, and I'm a high school business teacher uh, here in Cyprus. And I really love it, although I really do need your help. Um, apparently, TEA thinks that business money matters classes aren't that important. So they lowered the level of the uh, business classes. So now nobody wants to take those classes. So now I'm teaching half business, half Spanish. Ah, that's awful. Yeah, and okay. we were teaching the kids how to budget. We were teaching them, you know, I talked to them about scholarships. I talked to them about saving for college. I gave them well, my Texas, plan. Texas has a mandatory uh, personal finance uh, curriculum, and they use us a lot for our personal yeah. uh, finance. So I'll make sure Kelly picks up and our, our guys in the high school department get with you and see if we can help you with that. So congratulations. Thanks for telling us your story, Carly. All right, Kyle is up next. Uh, is is it it's Seal? Seal is up next from Mobile, Alabama. Hi, Seal. Hello, how are you? Better than I deserve. What year did you graduate? 2003. 2003. And uh, what? Uh, where'd you go to school? The University of Alabama. Oh, and I got you on the we'll air. We'll leave you anyway. on the air. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you anyway. I took a risk. And what's your degree in? In marketing. Marketing, good degree. Okay. And uh, how long did it take you to graduate? Four years. And how'd you get through debt free? Um, great question. So I've got two younger sisters, and my parents set up um, the prepaid college tuition for all three of us. Um, which was wonderful and really kind of took some pressure off of us going into college. Mm -hmm. But all three of us also got scholarships. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a presidential scholarship, which took care of my tuition for mm -hmm. all four years, wow. um, as long as I maintained, you know, an appropriate GPA level. And then, for those um, that don't honest, know, for those that don't know, what is a presidential scholarship? Uh, it's, I achieved it based on um, GPA and a certain level on the ACT test. So you came out of high school with a GPA of what? Uh, a little over a four zero. And a uh, and an ACT score of what? Thirty two. And, <laughs> and then you. Man. And then you. And then. <laughs> oh, and, we wouldn't apply for the presidential and then, scholarship. And then, you, uh, and then you. And then you applied for the presidential scholarship. You applied for several scholarships, I assume. Uh, when you apply, just in general, they award presidential scholarships. I assume across the country, but just based on certain levels, they will, you know, when you get your acceptance, they'll uh -huh. offer you a presidential at that time. Okay. All right. All right. Very cool. All right. Wow. And so that covered your tuition, plus you had prepaid, plus um, you, you, so you had scholarships and you had prepaid and that, that covered it all? Uh, it did. And actually, oddly enough, our, um, my dad encouraged us as we were going through, once we declared a major to go to that particular office and ask for whatever scholarships they were giving. And we uh, applied, you know, each year and um, it just, it made it an easy transition because there wasn't ever any question. That, that kind of was um, my initial job was finding what money was available and applying based on major or mm -hmm. based on, you know, what So what was your college GPA when you graduated? A little over a four. What do you do now? Uh, I work in pharmaceutical sales. Again, there's a second one. All right. And, you, and so you're making what, over a hundred? Yes, sir. All right. Very cool. Hey, thanks for telling us your story. We appreciate you joining us. It's a college, debt-free college theme hour right here on the Dave Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz is my guest. We're taking calls from those of you that graduated recently from college debt-free. So we've had one scholarship, super smart, and three hard workers all the way through. Not like the scholarship wasn't hard working hard, but right. she, she did. But this is the Dave Ramsey Show. This September 11th, join me, Tom Brokaw, and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square for 9-11, Rising Above. The choir's music and everyday Americans tell how our nation has risen from the ashes of tragedy to meet the new challenges of the 21st century. Mark the 10th anniversary of 9-11 with this tribute to the American spirit, 9-11, Rising Above. <laughs> 
Honor the memory of 9-11 Friday morning at 6 here on KCAA 1050 AM. KCAA invites you to listen to professional money manager Bill Gunderson every weekday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. Bill Gunderson is a highly respected money manager. He's a regular contributor to MarketWatch, TheStreet.com, and Town Hall Finance. Gunderson has appeared many times on the Fox News Channel, the Fox Business Network, and CNBC. You can hear Bill Gunderson's daily insight into the market at 7 a.m. weekdays right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. We have our friend and longtime partner, Howard Russell, who is the CEO and president of Christian Healthcare Ministries. Howard, it works, it's affordable. For followers of Christ, this is in fact an actual ministry. It's not just a word in the title of your organization. There's a wonderful model that members in all 50 states, they pay a monthly membership fee, if they have medical bills, they send those bills into us. We send the money to the member who then goes pays the bills. That model works because it finds its basis in the Bible in Acts chapter this 2 and 4. This is KCAA. It's getting hot here at Freeway Auto Center. Coming up Saturday, September 12th, Freeway Auto Center presents their car meet and sales event. They're bringing you trophies, raffles, vendors, music, and much more just when you thought there was nothing to do on a Saturday in September. <sighs> Freeway Auto Center brings you a day you won't forget. All brought to you by Low and Fitted. Not to mention the all-day promo and video recording. Find out how much fun you can have buying a car. Remember, it all comes together at Freeway Auto Center from 1 to 10 p.m. Saturday, September the 12th. Did I tell you where it all happens? No. It's going to be at 333 South Waterman. That's just north of the 10 Freeway. The Freeway Auto Center car meet and sales event. Hosted by Low and Fitted, September 12th. It's getting hot at Freeway Auto Center. You've never had such a good time buying a car. Here's your Money Minute with Market Wrap host Mo Ansari. If you follow the markets, you've probably been getting seasick lately. But what if I told you that market volatility can be a good thing? If you're a bargain hunter, this is your coupon. So keep your shopping list handy. If you're a long-term investor with plenty of time before retirement, the money going into your 401k each month will buy more shares when the markets are down. And if you have a good financial plan, you can relax while others worry because that plan will carry you beyond today's headlines. Of course, you should always consider professional guidance before making any financial decisions. That's your Money Minute. I'm Mo Ansari. For more tips on investing during market volatility and other investment topics, listen to Market Wrap weekdays at 5 p.m. on this station. For a free consultation with Mo Ansari, call 800-388-9700. That's 800-388-9700. Compaq Asset Management is a registered investment advisor. Funds custodian Fidelity Institutional Wealth Services, member FINRA SIPC. Do you remember where you were on 9-11? Then here's where you should be this Friday, September 11th, at the Breakfast with Our Heroes, a 9-11 memorial ceremony in recognition of local heroes. It takes place at 6.30 a.m. in the Riverside City Hall, Main Street in Riverside, and is presented by AT&T and 88 Impact Foundation. You'll hear from a first responder who was there when the towers came down. Proceeds benefit Riverside Police and Fire. Let us remember together this Friday, 6.30 a.m. at Riverside, City Hall. The quickest way between two points or more is AM 1050 KCAA. In 2012 with my master's degree. Wow. Okay. What's your degrees in? Um, they both lead up to speech language pathology. Oh, okay. Very cool. Where'd you go to school? Um, I went to the University of South Alabama in Mobile. Okay. And, um, uh... How long did it take you to graduate on your uh, on your undergrad? Um, it actually only took me three years because I did a lot of um, dual enrollment and AP classes while I was in high school. So um, 
when I first started college, I was actually very close to um, already being considered a junior at that time. But um, because of, like, the order you have to take classes in, um, I still had to do three years at that point. Wow. So I'm guessing you had a high GPA and got some scholarships. Yes, I did. I actually got the um, same scholarship that the last caller had, the presidential scholarship. Mm -hmm. And, and um, like, it had the same, um, like, almost the same GPA. I had, like, I graduated high school with a 4.925. I was valedictorian. Mm -hmm. And my, um, my, my ACD score was the same as hers, too. I got a 32. So it was a, a very big chunk of my um, college expenses was saved through that. I guess that's very cool. So the uh, and then the uh, postgraduate work was a couple of years, uh, um, two years. Yeah, so you had a total of five in. Okay, and you go debt free, Haley, to both of those undergrad and masters. Yes, um, for my masters, uh, I made a four point oh all through um, my undergrad, and I've won like other scholarships through the department um, for like academic excellence for speech and hearing sciences. And so whenever um, I applied, I got a graduate, um, fel like a graduate uh, fellowship. So I was able to, um, uh, I, I kind of was like a, a graduate assistant. I did, helped with like research and I, you know, helped run the, the, um, the speech and hearing clinic. Like help, I just helped with them and I got a stipend for that in addition to them paying for most of my um like tuition and things. Yeah, wow. so go going to work for the college is a great way to do it. I had a girl in here yesterday that had graduated with her master's and she worked She worked in admissions. She became a college employee and she mm -hmm. gets free tuition because she's a college employee and that's what paid for her master's. That's She did a debt-free scream yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, mm -hmm. So, very cool. Now, I've, I've asked several valedictorians this question over the years because I run into you uh, smart people every so often, but I, I always get interesting answers. And so you have to be truthful with me. No false humility, no craziness. Just tell the <laughs> truth. What percentage of this grade point average was work ethic and what percentage was just natural you're smart? I always say that I have a good memory and I just work really, really hard. I actually listened, always just listened to what my teachers wanted from me and kind of just did the hard work that they needed. I, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I do think I am, like, I have some intelligence, of course, but, um, I, most of it I think is definitely hard work. Okay. So you put in a lot of hours in the books in, co yes. in high school and college. <laughs> Yes, I did. And I know you were just saying, like, oh, you know, the people are actually working. And to me, that was, like, my full-time job was school, like, yeah. all through high school and college. Well, it, pay, it paid off. It paid job. off. No, I didn't mean you didn't work, but the other people were, <laughs> other people were working, like, 100-hour-a-week jobs. And you, yeah. you, looked at, you looked at your grades as a job, and it paid off. You got scholarships. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's hard work, too. Yeah, that's why I, I did correct it right at the end of my statement because I caught myself, realized what I was saying. But it's not like you had a, uh, you know, had it easy or something so uh, i guess you're an audiologist now huh or i'm a speech language pathologist. oh speech it was speech language that's what it was. i'm sorry okay and that's what you do for a living now what's your income yes um well it's a, i'm kind of in a transition right now um my first year out of school i worked at skilled nursing facilities and i made um i think it was like just at seventy thousand that year um Right now, I've switched, and I'm working at PRN, so my hours are not consistent, but I, and I'm on an hourly rate. I make um, $50 an hour PRN, so we haven't gone through this whole year yet for me to see how much I've made this year, um, but I love, I love my job and, like, the flexibility of it. So. I see. Okay. Very cool. Well, thank you for calling in. Appreciate you sharing your story. Very cool. So, two um, 4.0 students that get presidential scholarships which means that the the president of the college pays for their tuition or approves the scholarship and the college pays for their tuition and let's i'm not really through. sure we both had never heard of him before because you and i <laughs> probably would not be no, able to I, apply I, for the i wouldn't have qualified I, <laughs> I, uh, I did like the girl who worked in real estate though that's what i did that's what i thought i thought man girl after your own heart real estate yeah i, I got my real estate but that's license brilliant though, thinking outside the box yeah. she did i mean she looked around realized minimum wage wasn't going to cut it and so these people saying, well, you can't work at McDonald's and work your way through. Well, no, you can't. And part of part of getting through college debt free is you have to be smart enough to realize that and take a different kind of approach to what you're doing. And that's what she was smart enough to do. She found, figured out she could lease apartments and make serious money. Um, and the other guy sold furniture. Your brother Daniel worked in the mattress store. 
in college. He's, he did. He, he did some sales. He's doing good in sales now. Still passionate about the old mattresses. Yeah. He, 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 he's yeah. Still, he'll he, still he tell you. He can still you. rattle off all the mattress statistics <laughs> without a doubt. It's uh, So, to recap, what do you think we learned this hour? It sounds like from most of the stories, parents were involved in the communication portion saying, we're not going to pay for your college here. It wasn't that, you know, when the student was graduating high school, it was like, surprise, you guys pay for your own college. It was communicated and talked about. Obviously, work ethic. I mean, insane, whether it's the books or it's going to a, a job. Or both. Or both. Yeah, I mean, the work ethic is just crazy. And, and I just don't think that they were intimidated by it. Do you know, I think it didn't seem like, oh, poor me. It's just, there's no way I can do it. There was no victim mentality and no sense of uh, entitlement. No, not at all. Not anywhere in the spirits of the people we talked to. Not, not, and I'll bet you there wasn't before they went either. If there was, they worked their way through it. That's for sure. But I think the parents didn't allow that. And that's, that's one, you know, the, there's a sense of grit about this that is an indicator of future success more so than your GPA, and by the way. And it's hard because, like I said to one of the girls, I think it was Faith, you know, I'm like, that, that. those are long hours. I mean, you worked hard. And she said, yeah, I mean, I worked my butt off for four years, but now I don't have to continue to work my butt off to pay for college, you know, five years later. Yeah. And so that's the mentality you have to be in is just being disciplined, doing the work, doing what's not fun and what's not normal either. Probably all your friends are not doing it, but sacrificing that four years and paying through paying college through, I mean, they'll never have a student loan. So you can go to college if you're broke, completely debt free. If your family cannot pay for your school, you do it by college choice. For parents, we're hearing that you're involved and you're directing and you help direct on college choice. And by the way, you should direct on uh, usable, marketable degrees. All of these people we talked to were smart enough also, had enough street sense to get marketable degrees. And all graduated in four years too, which people think oh, is a myth too. That was, that's true. I missed that. One was four and a half and all the rest of them graduated Because he got four married. Years. Yeah. Yeah, he took a semester off to get married. To do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's true. They because were when you pay, there. when you have skin when you're in paying the game, for it, yeah, that's it. You're not going to miss the class. I, I got out in four years. All of you guys got out in four years because you were threatened by me. But um, and you worked a plan. You work a plan. So you make smart lifestyle choices. You're not living like in Taj Mahal. They're not out goofing off. Um, their college experience consisted of going and getting an education and working. In all of those cases. And the free time they did have, one of them said, you know, and I enjoyed it so much more. because Treasured it. Was spirit, it. Yeah. Treasured it was the word she used, yeah. So, uh, you, you know, and, and, you know, I'll tell you, this is this thing. There's something to this, uh, especially those of you doing postgraduate work, getting a job at the college and then they give you free tuition. That is very available on most master's programs. And so um, Chris Hogan did that, actually, when he went and got his master's in finance. Uh, he was playing football and ended up working as a graduate assistant and, you know, so became a college uh, uh, employee and that, that, got his, that got his master's for him. So, um, yeah, it, so this can be done, folks. Don't, don't believe all this crap. And, and this presidential candidate's running around saying that the taxpayers need to pay for your college. That's just communism. It's not even socialism. It's just communism. You need to pay for your college. And we just showed you how this hour. So you can do it. It's not any harder than that. And uh, thanks for joining me, Rachel. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. That was a great hour. It was. Very fun. Smart Money, Smart Kids is the book. And more information on going to college debt-free at smartmoneysmartkids.com. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. How will the upcoming interest rate increase affect business in the Inland Empire? Find out September 24th at the Inland Empire Economic Forecast Conference at Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario. With internationally noted economists, hear national, state, and local economy forecasts and gain valuable insight from real-world analysis. Featuring guest speaker Melissa Francis, anchor and host of Fox Business Network, will separate the Washington and Wall Street spin. That's Thursday, September 24th at 7 a.m. The 6th Annual Inland Empire Economic Forecast Conference at Citizens Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, presented by Citizens Business Bank and hosted by the Inland Empire Center of Claremont McKenna College and the UCLA Anderson Forecast, sponsored by Oramore Automotive Group and KCAA. For tickets, call 909-607-7265 or visit inlandempirecenter.org. That's 909-607-7265 or visit inlandempirecenter.org. 
This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. CNBC News is next, a courtesy of BuySellMakeOffer.com, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. I'm Chris Maurer, CNBC Business Radio. The Dow's up 92 points, the Nasdaq higher by 42. If you're looking for the domestic airline with the best 